more reaction, we can speak to Rebecca Leffler, the France correspondent for film magazine Screen International. She joins us from New York. Rebecca, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Just first, what comes to mind for you when you think of Alain Delon? There's so much. What a life. Where do I even begin? Uh, his life and career will actually make a great biopic uh, someday. I'm sure somebody's already working on that. Um, he's been known, obviously, in the past few years since his health has declined. There's been a lot of headlines about his feuding with his family. And, you know, in recent years with that uh, honorary Palm d'Or and Khan, that kind of unleashed uh, a lot about his, uh, dug up a lot about his political views and his sort of controversial um, feelings. He wasn't just an actor. He was really a personality. Um, I would say maybe the last, one of the last real French movie stars. Uh, he was known um, all over the world, not just in France, even though his career obviously was really carved out there. He's been in, you know, some 100 movies. Um, you're seeing we're watching him on the on the red carpet in Cannes, where I actually met him in Cannes, and he really was a movie star. I mean, he looked at you with those, you know, the press is talking about his deep blue eyes um and and he really was known for his looks but also really respected within the world of auteur cinema um in films that were in Cannes, also in venice um you know amongst all of his films he, he didn't win many awards he had he was awarded a cesar award a couple of honorary palms in berlin and con but um he really was admired by directors by fellow actors he's done a lot of auteur films i mentioned but also some commercial films the julius cesar in in, in asterix and uh, a few comedies there uh, towards the end of his career even tv films uh which uh, is quite rare and his longevity um is also striking you said that his life would make a good biopic, Can, and I know he became a movie star sort of almost on accident. Can you talk maybe a little bit about, about his personal life, his childhood, and kind of his journey to becoming a star? Um, well, what is actually really interesting is that he was discovered uh, in Cannes, uh, at the Cannes Film Festival, by a big Hollywood agent in the 1950s, and he ended up coming back to France, and he didn't really pursue that career. He he was starring in different auteur films, um, and he came from, he had kind of a, a troubled childhood, and even recently, you know, he had different, uh, many different relationships, and he's known for being a fiancé of Romy Schneider. He's had several wives, uh, a lot of children um, who apparently were with him by his side um, in the end, despite all of the headline-making news in recent years. Um, so, yeah, his personal life was very much the subject of interest uh, by the tabloids. He also wasn't shy about sharing, again, his political views, his controversial views on things like um, same-sex marriage and women. Uh, but I think he's someone that was still very well respected uh, within, within the industry. And what's interesting is he was discovered by this Hollywood agent, became known in France, and is probably one of the best known actors uh, from France outside of France. But um, he is really well known also in uh, Japan. Uh, he had quite quite the career there. He started in the Samurai, um, but he uh, he's really more well known for his career in French, in France, uh, with Italian directors as well, of course. Um, and we are look. I'm looking at him, you know, from as he was growing up younger, um, e even into his older years, and he still was considered this, I think the New York Times headline today was smoldering French actor, and everything I'm reading, even though when someone passes, they're usually focused more on their career, their lives, and every single article is starting out, the, the handsome French actor, the international sex symbol. Um, so I think it is rare to have someone that has, you know, that, that career um, and also kind of is still known, even though obviously his health declined in the end, um, as this, you know, sexy, smoldering movie star. Yeah, I feel like his looks are definitely the thing that's getting emphasized. You mentioned some of his more controversial views, and his death does come as French cinema has sort of finally been having its its Me Too moment. Do you think that that's going to influence his, his legacy and the way that he gets remembered? Um, well, I do find it very interesting. You know, this this is qu quite the time for the politics in general um, in France and the U.S. Here where I am, and in in, in within the industry. Um, but he's someone who's managed and looking at just the different. You show them the the homage, the 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 different 
words that everyone has been saying about Emmanuel Macron, calling him a French monument, um, um, an icon of French cinema. And uh, the head of the CNC today just just called him that. And I think even looking, you know, on social media and, and talking to people I know in the industry, actors, directors, these are mo most kind of like Hollywood and the French industry is quite, you know, left leaning, very democratic, very much, you know, in support, as we've seen and with the, this new wave of, of Me Too and a lot of people facing consequences for past actions. That said, everyone is still commending him, um, his career and his acting. And um, he was also a producer and just kind of the, the mark that he left uh, on French cinema. I think Francis Husserre put it well. They've said, you know, he, he's not dead. He'll live on uh, on the screen. And I think he, his roles, you know, Plein Soleil and uh, The Leopard and Rocco and his brothers and and um, even things like, you know, this generation uh, playing Julius Cesar and Asterix. Uh, I think that he that is interesting that he's managed to kind of maintain this ability to be respected by the industry, even though obviously, you know, he was loved and hated by, by many. Yeah, despite the controversy, it's definitely been an outpouring of, of positive support uh, here in France. Rebecca Leffler, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much again for speaking with us. That's Rebecca Leffler, the France correspondent uh, for Film Magazine Screen International.